Hi guys, it's Fufu here bringing you week 7 battle for Newcastle United and this week I'm re-battling Demo who I battled in like week 2 I think. Uh, so that was quite a while ago and he actually beat me quite heavily. Um, I misplayed really badly with my Curum, um, letting Slowbro burn it with a Scold when I had sub and so that was really bad uh, but I'm, I'm wanting to I'm wanting to learn from my mistakes and go from there I'm bringing a relatively similar team that I did last time I've got a defensive scum with toxic for Mew I've got a defensive Rotom to take banded sacred fires from Entei if that is what Demo wishes to bring um, I'm bringing a Spadef Deoxys defense uh, mainly just to take attacks from Thunderous and Nida King if he chooses to bring either of those um, and I'm bringing the same sub roost physical curum. Two things are different. I'm bringing Infernape again. Last time it was Scarf, but this time I've gone for a special set with Nasty Plot and Life Orb because it hits his team really hard actually. I've got Grassnoss on there for the Slowbro as well. And I'm also bringing Pinsir in place of Domfan, and I know that's a really weird switch. Um, but it's it's mainly just because I wanted to go a bit more offensive against Demo. He's got a lot of really bulky things, and I felt like if I could punch some walls in the bulk, then it will be easier for the rest of my team to clean up. So I've actually just brought some really powerful Pokemon this time and gone for a more wall breaker approach. Demo looks to have brought maybe the exact same team as last time. I'm not sure if he's changed anything up, but those are all the same Pokemon. So likely to be a defensive floor, just a bulky Defog Scizor. Um, he brought AV Entei last time. He brought a Colberberry Col Slowbro and Colberberry Mew, um, which were both bulky. Mew was kind of a stealth rocking Wisp set. And then he brought a Scarf Thunderous. I'm hoping it's Scarf Thunderous because I can deal with Scarf Thunderous more than a Life Orb set with pranks to T-Wave and stuff. I don't like that set. It really run runs havoc with my team. So um, we'll get into the match. I thought that I'd lead with Skarm in case he led with Mew to get up rocks. I thought that was potentially his most likely lead. But because I didn't bring Don Van this time, he's actually going to end up leading with Thunderous. So that definitely puts me on the back foot straight away. Um, and I don't really want to take too much from Thunderous. I could go straight into my uh, Deoxys in case he goes for a T T-Bolt because I can take the T T-Bolt and then potentially get my Rocks, which would be really good. Rocks are really helpful because it hits both Thunderous and Entei um, that are probably the two biggest threats to my team. So I want to get my Rocks up if I can. Uh, but the Thunderous does just go straight for a Volt Switch on the first turn. And that kind of gets me thinking he's probably Scarf again. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. We don't see any Life Orb damage though. Um, so I think he's potentially Scarf because Volt Switch is obviously a good move on a Scarfer. He goes into his Mega Scizor. I do not want to stay in to take a U-turn because this guy is really important in just taking some of those th thunderous hits. Thunderous might be really hard to deal with if I don't keep my Deoxys healthy. So I'm going to go into my Rotom Heat here. Rotom, I maybe should have preserved a bit more for the uh, for the Entei because I do need to take hits from that. However, if I had gone into Skarmory and he had just U-turned, he'd have gone straight back into his Thunderous. So there was no point in that. I needed to go into my... Rotom to get a bit of initiative myself because I do have Volt Switch on this. Uh, Demo actually goes into his Entei here. I'm just going to Volt Switch out. I switched out Toxic for Willow Wisp on my Rotom, which is probably a mistake because I really should have something to hit this Entei with. I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch this time though to get some damage on the Entei and get some initiative so that I can go into something that takes it on a little bit better. He goes for a Stone Edge though and that does way too much damage. That was way, way, way too much damage. And looking at the damage my Volt Switch does, he's not AB this time. That is a Banded Entei, which is pretty spooky. But it does mean that I can go into my DUDE, the Infernape, and a Life Orb Focus Blast is going to wreck this Entei. It's really, really powerful. So we're going to go straight for that. There's no reason to do anything else if he does want to stay in. A Stone Edge will do a lot of damage, so I don't want to play around. He goes into his Mew, I missed the Focus Blast, probably not too much of an issue. I mean, chip damage on Mew is helpful, but it's fine, I'm, I'll deal with it. As Mew goes for Rocks, I don't want Rocks up, my team is weak to Rocks. I've got the Rotom, which would almost be dead if I let Rocks stay up. I've also got the Pinsir, and I've got the Curum. I've got all my Rock weak Pokemon this week. Uh, so I want to get rid of them as easily as possible, so I'm just going to defog with my Skarm, and get rid of those Rocks. 
Now, I'm glad that he stayed into burn because he could have just switched straight out into his Thunderous and got Volt Turn going on again. Um, but I, he didn't. He gets the burn as I defog. And then I, that allows me to get a Toxic on the Mew, which is pretty nice. It will pressure him to go into Florgis if he has Aromatherapy. And Florgis is an easy switch in on a lot of my offensive threats. So that's fine. Um, and oh, yeah, I'm okay with this. So I'm just wanting to defog again as he's probably going to switch out this turn. There's not really much else a Mew can do to a Skarmory and I will be able to stall him out seeing as though I've got Toxic on him and he's only got Burn on me. Burn on Skarmory is not an issue for me really. Skarmory is good at just living, making sure I get the defog and Toxicing things. That's Skarmory's aim. I do have Brave Bird but that's not really the main deal with the set. So he goes into the Thunderous now and he's going to get that spooky vault turn going on again. I'm actually going to make more of an offensive play or just a play that hopefully directs him to do something that I want him to do and I'm going to go into Cure him to take the vault switch. I wanted to keep Rotom around and I didn't want uh, to switch into Deoxys again because we saw he just go straight into Sizzle. So I'm going to go into Cure him and he's going to go for the Volt Switch. Kyurem is obviously going to take this really well. Uh, this Kyurem is quite heavily invested in bulk. It's max attack, adamant, um, with enough speed to outspeed uninvested base 100s if that's what he cho chose to bring. Because last time he brought an AV Entei with no speed investment, so my Kyurem could outspeed it even though it doesn't have max speed, it just has enough to speed creep. Uh, so that was pretty nice. He actually goes into his floor just here. I thought that he'd be going for an aromatherapy, but I saw this as an opportunity to get my Rotom in because there's absolutely, if this is a defensive uh, floor just, there's absolutely no chance this will KO and I will be able to get a huge pain split off because pretty much this entire team is at full health. And this actually really pissed off Demo. He was not in a good mood. Um, he thought that that should have killed and he just kind of went off on one hit and it was really annoying. He was messaging me on Skype saying that he just wants to quit, he just wants to quit and that's not cool because it's gonna it's gonna mess up the differentials and stuff but he was really upset about it. Um, but there wasn't really anything he could do. I knew as soon as this thing could come in I would be able to get my pain split off. That's That was my plan. Uh, he needed to keep the rocks up if he wanted to prevent it. So, anyways, I'm just going to Volt Switch on the floor. Just I know that's not going to do any damage because he did get the Spadef Death Drop. But it means that I might be able to bring in something for this floor. Just and so I go straight into my Mega Pincer, seeing an opportunity to maybe set up because I thought that he'd probably go for a Wish or an Aroma Therapy. I doubted he would go for another Moon Blast because obviously that's not doing any damage. So I thought it was very easy switch. I'm just going to go straight for a sword dance because if he's going to switch out there's no point me going for an attack this turn because it's, the thing is going to get a wish. He goes into his Entei interestingly enough, I did not expect that. I would have thought he'd go into the Slowbro maybe because I think Slowbro might be able, yeah I think Slowbro can take a plus two return without any damage on it already. Uh, but he goes into his Entei maybe hoping... Uh, to take one because Entei has reasonable bulk. Entei has pretty good bulk, but anyways, I just go for uh, frustration here, and uh, yeah, Entei does not go out of speed, and because he's banded, I'm guessing he's invested in attack and speed, and he's yeah, he can't take a plus two frustration. That just kills it, and that was huge. That was huge because it means that. Uh, he's not got too much to hit my Rotom with right now. Rotom is looking really good and that made him even more annoyed because uh, obviously he thought the Rotom should be dead already because of the floor just so he starts making some uh, kind of just bad plays and uh, it was I'm not sure if it was an in intentional or if it was just because he was kind of in a blind rage and wasn't thinking but yeah he, he makes some bad plays and uh, well, you, well, you'll see what happens. Anyway, he brings in the Scizor. Uh, right now, I'm thinking he's he probably will go for a Bullet Punch. I'm not sure if he'll go for a Bullet Punch, so I'm going to switch out. I do have Fusion Bolt to hit this. That's my only attack, so there's not really any point me staying in because he's uh, too much health to for me to be doing anything. He gets the knockoff on the Rotom. A bit unfortunate because he does get rid of my leftovers, but again, I don't think there's any way that he can kill me from that range. I do outspeed anyway, and you can get another plane split off. Now, I could have gone for an overheat there and just killed it, but keeping this Rotom at good health is actually really, really good for me because I can switch in on so many things and just be a pain. Uh, no pun intended with the pain splitting. But anyways, 
Yeah, this is looking good. I'm gonna go for a Volt Switch on the Slowbro just to go into something else. And uh, he ha actually has a Wacom Barry, which is really interesting. I'm guessing that was for maybe my Curum B because I carried Fusion Bot last time. I am gonna make the Risky Switch into my physical Curum B on a probable Scold this time, but. It's not as risky as last time we battled because I have other things to deal with the slow bro. I've got a life or grass knot that easily two it goes. It does so much damage on the Infernape. So uh, I wasn't too upset if he got the burn, but Kurum is really good. And if he doesn't get the burn, I'm in an incredible position. He doesn't end up getting the burn. I can get up a, a sub up on this unless he has raw, uh, which I thought he might do because he saw my set last time. And I've actually just brought the same set. So I'm going to set up a sub right here on the switch. Um, that's great for me. I get my free sub. I'm going to go for a fusion bolt on this floor. Just still not sure what set it is. It's definitely defensive. But I don't know if it's on the physical or the special side. So I'm going to go for fusion bolt to see how much it does. Uh, if it's specially defensive, this is going to wreck this floor. Just maybe not take it out from there. I'm not sure, but... Turns out that it's actually defensive. It's an easy to hit KO with the Fusion Bolt. Uh, Dima goes for the Wish here. I don't know or if he has Protect or not. I could have roosted predicting the Protect, but I just go for a Fusion Bolt right now. Um, because if he doesn't have the Protect or if he wants to pass the, pass the Wish off, uh, I just wanted to get the Fusion Bolt off. Turns out he doesn't go for protect. I'm not sure if that's because he doesn't have it or if it's because he has it and is just frustrated with the game right now and doesn't go for it. But I am able to take out the floor just, which is beautiful um, because it means that his Mew is now permanently toxic. Um, so that will make it a hell of a lot easier to take out. And yeah, it's just good. Now he makes a bad play. And this annoyed me because this is not a play that he should have made. And it was blatantly on purpose. Uh, he goes into his Slowbro. Slowbro cannot do anything to my Curum. I don't think it can break its sub with a Psychic or a Psyshock because I'm so heavily invested in HP. And he goes for a Yawn as well, so he doesn't even try. Um, so he could have gone in there. He could have gone into his Sizzle and Bullet Punch because Fusion Bolt does not take Sizzle out from where it's at. Um, but no, he just lets me kill off his Slowbro as well. So... He, that was a play that he should not have made and it made me quite angry that he wasn't giving me the match that he should have done He was just giving me kills uh, So yeah, Kurum getting lots of kills though, which is I cool I guess and it is a threat and it would have done a lot of uh, it would cause a lot of problems for his team now he goes into his thunderous again not really sure why he could have gone for a Focus blast to try and break my sub because I haven't shown ice beam yet. In fact, I've only shown fusion bolt um, so, but anyway, he goes into that and goes for a Volt Switch when, again, he could have just gone straight into his Scizor. And so I'm going to go for a Dragon Claw, seeing how much it does to this Mew. And it does a ridiculous chunk of damage. That is so much damage, because last time he brought a Mew that was max HP, max speed. And if, I think this is probably the same Mew, but that that is ridiculous damage. And again, Mew can't do anything to this. Mew does not break my sub with a size jog if it is not invested in a uh, special attack and it can't it obviously can't uh, willow with me he gets his rocks up which actually is a good play because he still has his volt turn core and my team does not deal with volt turn very well um so or the team i brought today anyway so yeah that i mean at least he did do that with him you rather than trying to break my sub um, but now he does switch into his sizzle, I believe, after all that pratting around and starts to do things again, which is good. So yeah, from that range, Fusion Bolt is definitely not going to KO a sizzle. He's able to break my sub with a bullet punch. He would have been able to do that from the get-go and uh, threat me out with another bullet punch. Uh, so I'm going to go for a Fusion Bolt and do some damage to the sizzle. I still have switch ons on the sizzle. However, he got his rocks up, so I can't uh, freely switch into my Rotom. But the thing is, Sizzle and Volt Turn is still a problem. So I actually am going to just sack my uh, Rotom at this stage because there's not really much else it can do. Uh, he's going to go for a U-Turn, which was the correct play to make because obviously I don't want to stay in on my Curum. And uh, my Rotom takes the damage. He switches out. What this does mean is that he'll probably come with his, in with his Thunderous and go for a Volt Switch, but that will allow me a free switch into my Infernape on the Scizor, um, which probably just wins me the game from here because 
uh, he can't switch into his thunderous on a fire blast. So, yeah, basically, basically, well, to be fair, he 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 misplays here as well. It, yeah, he misplays here. So he goes into his mega scissor because he has to. I go into dude the infernate and I'm just gonna go for a fire blast. He has nothing to hit me particularly hard, but I do actually miss my uh, fire blast. As he goes for the defog, just taking away hazards on my side of the field, he could have gone for anything else. If he had gone for U-turn there, that would have been much better because he would have dealt some damage and got into his thunder which outspeeds me. But anyways, I'm able to take out the uh, sizzle there with a beautiful fire blast. I do like, I really like Infernape and I love it when he does things. Um, so, yeah, now he can go into his Thunderous, and you'll see here that if he had just gone for any attack other than Defog and got some damage on, he may well have killed with this Volt Switch. I don't know. I'm not sure if any of his attacks would have done that much damage. U-Turn probably would have done, to be fair. But he's taken me into Blaze range, and so that's just going to Oko, that Fire Blast is going to Oko the Thunderous because of Life Orb and Blaze and stuff. So that's the battle, it was a 5-0, Demo did not play to his best, and I was annoyed at him for that because I wanted a proper battle. Um, I mean, at the state, I know when he got annoyed, that it was for, I don't want to say good reason, because that was a plan of mine, I, want, I knew that he couldn't do anything to my Rotom, I knew that I'd be able to get my pain split off, um, and then he let his Entei die, so, I, I mean, from that stage... He still had every opportunity, every chance to win because he had the Volt turn that really pressured my team. However, I had a lot of things that were still really, really threatening and powerful. I still had my uh, Pinsir at full health. I still had Curum in the wings. I still had all my defensive core. Um, so he would have been hard pressed to win at that stage, but still it, the differential would have been so much closer. Uh, at the very least, so. But that's the match, it means that I've won 5-0, beating Demo means that I've actually uh, secured a place in the playoffs, which is very, very good. Um, excited about it, but also very nervous because I'm gonna have to play some really spooky people, like George, who I lost 5-0 to at the beginning of the season, although I know my team a lot better now, and I know how to play a lot better. Um, I have to play Adam next week, though, and that's gonna be interesting because it's going to determine who plays who in the playoffs. So I could at this stage, I think, be playing anyone. Yeah, I, I could be playing anyone here. Because if I... Uh, Miguel is looking like he's number one seed. I don't think he can be touched there. So number one seed plays number four seed. If I lose to Adam next week, I will, I will be number four seed. So I'll be playing Miguel. If I beat Adam, then either... Adam or George Septile MC will be fourth seed and I will be playing the other one of them depending on their differentials. Um, it's also interesting to note that George is playing Miguel. So basically the four people who are going into the playoffs are actually playing another person in the playoffs in the final week. So it's going to be next week's going to be interesting and the playoffs are going to be interesting. Please stay tuned for that. Um, Demo did apologize after this match, which I really respect him for. He's uh, I it just annoyed me because the GBA means a lot to some people and it it was really disrespectful for him to do that. He's giving me a bigger differential which he shouldn't be doing at this stage because it affects the playoffs. It's not just me and him this match. This affects other people and he's disrespecting them too. Um, but he did apologise after which I do really appreciate and I think that he's uh, kind of trying to get to a better place because he was really stressed out at the time. Um, so I hope that he can work on those things and come back a better GBA battler for it. Anyways, I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Bye!